We want to create more complicated artwork with a lot of detail in it and a lot of colors, but you need to go on dark shirts. One of your options is simulated process. Simulated process, as we talked about earlier in the artwork section, is a little hard to color separate. That's why I used spot process software to color separate simulated process. This is one of the images that we worked on earlier. This is going to be broken down to a four color image. We have our white underbase, which is then going to be flashed, our yellow, red, and then gray. Now sometimes this can be printed with a highlight white, but this, in this case we're only going to print a four color version of this image. When you're setting up for production on a rotary press, this is actually an MNR Sidewinder press with side clamps using automatic frames. The advantage of a press like this is that we can take these frames directly out of this press, pop them into our automatic. So it works with the Trilock registration system and it's consistent with automatic printing. So if you have a shop that you're either wanting to grow into an automatic really quickly or you already have an automatic, an MNR automatic, this would be a good press to have. Now this is a little bit more bigger and bulkier than a Hopkins press. It doesn't move quite as fast. I actually prefer the Hopkins press over this one with the exception as if I had an automatic sitting right next to this press. This is a rotary press meaning four stations and our print station, flash station, then two cooldown stations. Now this is a six color four station press. The advantage to a six color six station press is that we have two extra drying stations. So as we print the white underbase, we will rotate it to the left to flash dry. Now it flash dries at a high temp. Probably after it comes out of the flash dryer, your shirt's gonna be over 300 degrees. We can't print directly on top of that. So there is cool down time needed. That's why having a one station press or even a two station press really limits your production speeds because you can't go as fast because you don't have cool down time. Now with this press, you have one, two cool down stations. With a six station press, you have four cool down stations. A six station press will up your production speeds by about 30, 35, maybe 40%. With this press, we want to print on this station, rotate left, flash on the station directly to the left or directly to the right of your print station, depending on which way you spin the press and your shop configuration. Then we have our two cooldown stations and then our unload and uh, station directly to the conveyor dryer right there. Now, if we wanted to go a little faster, and especially if we had a six station press, we could have a loader, unloader. All I would be doing is printing, some would be loading and unloading right there, and then Loading directly into, unloading directly into the conveyor dryer. For this case, I'm going to be printing and loading myself. With a shirt like this, this is a four color shirt with a flash, a printer that's very good can actually print 130, 140 shirts an hour of this particular print. Um, with a loader unloader on a six station press, you might even get up to oh, maybe 160, 170 an hour. Now that doesn't come close to an automatic press. Automatic press can do 500 plus an hour. So it really depends on your production capabilities and needs on what direction you decide to go. Let's get printing. Now to start print, we're going to load all the shirts up first. We're going to be using black shirts. Make sure our pallets are sticky. This press has aluminum pallets. Aluminum pallets can hold more heat and they don't warp over time. Both the M&R presses and the Hopkins presses are available with aluminum pallets. Uh, it's a very good upgrade and investment to make in a press. Aluminum pallets are square, so we don't have the luxury of the neck attachment. So we simply, typically leave the neckline directly on the edge of the pallet. Loading the pallets up first gives us a head start when we actually start printing. Once all their pallets are loaded up, we'll rotate our flash into the print position. As you start printing, it may take you a little while to get to full production speed capabilities. So sometimes it's a little easier to use an automatic rotating flash. An automatic rotating flash works on a foot pedal. You hit the foot pedal, the flash automatically rotates into position, stays there for the given amount of time that's needed to flash the garment, then rotates back. This can help in scorching or over curing your flashed garments instead of a manual flash which stays there until you move it back. So if we take a little bit longer printing the next color or lining things up, lining the t-shirt up, we can't load it fast enough, we don't want to over cure the ink. If we over flash or over cure the ink before we print the next color on top of that, that's going to prohibit the next color from sticking to the underbase. The underbase just needs to be gel cured. It doesn't need to be cured completely. If the underbase is cured all the way through, it basically becomes plastic, plastisol ink, plastic. So what happens is the color won't stick to it. It will just dry on top of it. And one or two washes, it'll start 
falling off the underbase. So overcuring your underbase is a big no-no. You do not want to let your underbase cure underneath a flash dryer for longer than maybe 10, 12 seconds. Let's rotate our flash into position and start production. So now that's rotated. We're gonna be using a push stroke with this print. So I'm gonna flood the screen up and then do my push stroke back. Working very similar to an automatic. Now we rotate the t-shirt and then we do the next print. While we're doing this print, that t-shirt is drying. And this is, first underbase is two passes. Rotate it. This press moves a little slower than the Hopkins press. Probably print a little bit faster, maybe 20, 25% faster with the Hopkins press. Now we're coming around to our first white underbase. So we're gonna start printing color on top of that. So as we rotate this, we're gonna rotate the color as well. Now this prints wet on wet, color on color. So just one, pass each, two, and then three. Now we need to rotate back. This is done. So we have to take this shirt off, put it on the belt, load another shirt, and continue going. This is where an automatic flash dryer can really come into benefit because right now our flash is sitting over the shirt just a little too long. You probably want to take it off faster than this as to not cause burning. As you print, you get into a groove. and then we start moving into production speed. Make sure to keep spray adhesive on your pallets. And with this, you don't have a lot of time to line your shirts up, so you really need to practice loading shirts and making sure that they're lined properly each time. Basically, every single time around, I'm bringing color screens back and printing with them. You also want to ensure that your hands stay clean so you don't get ink on your t-shirts. So we're working in production. We're not going super fast, but we're printing well over 100 shirts an hour, which is not too bad considering this is a premium quality shirt and we can probably charge quite a bit of money for it. do a couple more shirts and then we'll print it, finish the print off. Now we'll finish our production run. So let's rotate our flash dryer out of position. And from here on out, we're just gonna finish the colors up. And then this is our last one. As you spin your pallets, you want to keep your screens moving with them so that when your pallet comes into the print position, your screen's ready to print. There's our final print. In that four minute section, we printed eight shirts. That's two shirts a minute or 120 shirts an hour. Not too bad, especially since we're using a little bit bigger and slower press and the fact that we're doing a more complicated print. Now, 120 shirts an hour is actually pretty fast when you add that up over a four to six hour print shift, and it's not breaking a sweat. It's not over cumbersome to print that fast. There are printers that can print manually faster than that, even with this type of print, you know, even up to 160, 170 shirts an hour, some maybe even 200. So depending on how well you print when you start, you might be starting at 80 shirts an hour, 90 shirts an hour. Now, this is a nice looking complex print that can bring us a lot of money. We're talking about 
how much we can sell this print for times 120 an hour. We're coming out way ahead of the game and we start putting money directly in our back pocket.